Now, if you have one theta heart rate acceleration during uterine contractions, is it clear? When you have theta heart rate acceleration during uterine contraction, it means that the cause of the acute theta digest is pre-placental. Usually, it is pre-placental or it is physiologic. Is it clear? It is either physiologic, it's a normal change, or there is a pre-placenta acute fetal distress. Is it clear? So let's say that during uterine contraction, there is an acceleration of more than 30 beats per minute squared. Is it clear? It means that it is either either a physiologic change or there is an acute fetal distress with a pre-placental cause. Is it clear? And now we need to know now the causes of pre-placenta acute fetal distress. The pre-placenta acute fetal distress are the causes of acute fetal distress before as a result of the blood supply to the placenta. So it is usually related to the mother, like in a case of one in a pre-placenta acute fetal distress, you can have one. In pre-placenta acute fetal distress, the first case is that you can have um, the cubitus of the mother. Is it clear? That's why generally, um, if when you have a woman in labor, you ask her to sleep in the lateral decubitus position, particularly the left lateral decubitus position, but because in when she's the when she when she's um, in dorsal decubitus, the uterus is going to compress at the level of the inferior vena cava, which reduces the vena the venous return and which reduces the cardiac output. So if, when you have a reduction in cardiac output, the child ch now is, is in distress. Is because there's reduced perfusion of the uterus. Now, the second element is any mother maternal disease will result into reduced perfusion of the kidney, like any cardiovascular disease of the mother in heart failure, like any respiratory disease in the mother, like any any disorder is going to reduce the perfusion of the placenta. Is it it's a pre placenta cause of the acute fetal distress? Now, if there is a fetal acceleration, if the fetal acceleration occurs, <coughs> let's say that the fetal acceleration occurs um, um, before before contraction, is it clear? So when the fetal acceleration occurs before contraction or after contraction, it means that the etiology is the etiology of the acute fetal distress is placental etiology of the acute fetal distress. Is it clear? When the fetal acceleration occurs before or after um, uterine contraction, it means that the etiology is placental um, acu acu placenta etiology of acute fetal distress. And what are the placenta etiology of acute fetal distress? The first one we have placenta abruptio. Is it clear? You have placenta abruptio, you have placenta previa, is it clear? You have vasa previa, you have placenta abruptio, placenta previa, you have vasa previa, and you have utero placenta insufficiency, like in a case of utero placenta insufficiency, like in a case of patients, um, in utero placenta insufficiency, is like in a case of post term babies. Is it clear? Post term babies, is it clear? Or post term pregnancy. So, those are the different etiologies of when you have an acceleration before or after uterine contraction. Is it clear? It is either abruptio, previa, vasa previa, utero, placenta insufficiency. Now, if you have um, 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 if you have now um, acceleration which is independent of contraction, it means that it is variable. When you have a variable acceleration, is it clear? The acceleration is independent to the contraction. It's independent to contraction. It means that usually it is associated. When you have an acceleration, sorry, vasa previa is not there. If you have an acceleration which is independent to the the, the a contraction it means that it is variable acceleration and the etiology of variable acceleration is post placenta is it clear when you have a post placental acceleration when you have a variable acceleration think of post placenta etiology and post placenta etiology is associated with the umbilical cord is it clear they usually associated with the umbilical cord and now what are the elements that you can have here you can have vasa previa vasa previa is when you have um, when you have an um, abnormal implantation of the of the the, the umbilical cord to the 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 the, the, the <coughs> below the lower uterine segment or you can have a um, knot of the umbilical cord when you have a knot of the umbilical cord or you have a nuchal nuchal cord meaning that the cord is at the level of, is attached to the neck of the child is it clear? when you have a nuchal cord you have a vasa previa you have a, a, a cord knot 
a knot of the cord, all that can be achieved with post placenta etiology in variable accelerations. Now, after visualizing variable accelerations, so we now need to know to understand the fetal parameter of fetal heart variability. Is it clear? The fetal heart variability. Now, for fetal heart variability, we need to know that what when we want to speak about fetal heart variability is the main one that is used in the diagnosis when you want to diagnose um, um, acute fetal distress. The major one that is used in the diagnosis of acute fetal distress, fetal variability from 5 to 20. And generally, if you have a fetal heart variability of less than 5, it means that there is acute fetal distress. Is it clear? And to confirm that acute fetal distress, we use now a pH um, scale, a pH metric of the fetal scalp blood. Fetal scalp blood. Is it clear? Do a pH metric of fetal scalp blood, and then the pH is going to be less than 7.2, showing that there is acidosis. Is it clear? I also do, apart from the pH metric, you can do also the arterial blood gases. Arterial blood gases, um, the other arterial blood gases is going to show that what? The partial pressure of oxygen is going to be less than 80 millimeters of mercury is it clear? and all that can tell you that the patient is in acute fetal distress to confirm but the best parameter that is going to help you to know that is acute fetal distress fetal heart variability of less than five is it clear? so those are the different elements now after the fetal heart variability we have the fetal heart rate the fetal heart rate is the one which is most classical is it clear? and it is used when you have pathograph so in our context we we don't have a card to go come to measure the fetal heart viability and also to measure the fetal heart accelerations is it clear we just have um, a pathograph to measure the fetal heart rate and generally when the fetal heart rate is greater than 160 beats per minute it's already um, a suspicion of fetal heart rate and when it goes now down to 110 less than 110 beats per minute it means that there is a confirmation of the um, um, uh, acute fetal distress and then they will must operate that patient is it clear so in our classical context where we just have a pathograph the diagnosis of acute fetal distress is made with um, a fetal heart rate of more than 160 beats per minute or a fetal heart rate of less than 110 beats per minute despite a good monitoring of labor so when you are doing that now it's an indication for cesarean section is it clear? so we don't have other parameters like fetal heart viability and other parameters like fetal heart acceleration so this is the only parameter that can be used in order to diagnose um, acute fetal distress in our context so now those are the different elements that you evaluate in patients that are when you want to evaluate for the fetal heart well-being is it clear?